Number one, calculate the value of f of two using the function shown below. So all we need to do is replace x with two. So we have two to the third plus five times two squared minus nine. Two times two times two is eight. Two squared or two times two is four. And five times four is 20. 20 minus nine is 11. Eight plus 11 is 19. So therefore answer choice E is the right answer. Number two, find the inverse function using the function shown below. So feel free to pause the video and work on this example. So let's replace f of x with y. Next, switch x and y. And then just solve for y. In order to get rid of the radical, we need to raise both sides of the equation to the fifth power so that these two will cancel. So right now we have x to the fifth is equal to 7y plus 3, I mean minus 3. Now let's add 3 to both sides. So x to the fifth power plus 3 is equal to 7y. And then divide both sides by 7. So x to the fifth plus 3 divided by 7 is equal to y, which is also equal to the inverse function. And so this is the answer. Number three, if f of x is equal to negative 15, what is the value of x? So let's replace f of x with negative 15. Now, since we have a negative in front of 2x squared, let's take everything from the right side and move it to the left side. So if we have a negative in front of the 2x squared on the right side, on the left side is going to be positive 2x squared. 5x is positive on the right side. It's going to be negative on the left. Negative 3 is going to change to plus 3. And let's keep the negative 15 on the left side. 3 minus 15 is negative 12. So now we need to factor. We have a trinomial where the leading coefficient is not 1. So we need to multiply the leading coefficient by the constant term in order to factor it. 2 times negative 12 is negative 24. And two numbers that multiply to negative 24 but add to the middle coefficient, negative 5, that's going to be negative 8 and 3. So now let's replace the middle term, that is negative 5x, with negative 8x plus 3x. And then we could factor by grouping. So let's take out the GCF in the first two terms, and that's going to be 2x. 2x squared divided by 2x is x, negative 8x divided by 2x is negative 4. And now, in the last two terms, let's take out a 3. And so this is what we're going to have. Now, we can factor the GCF, which is x minus 4. If we take that out, we'll be left with 2x plus 3. Now, let's set x minus 4 equal to 0 and 2x plus 3 equal to 0. So x is 4, 2x is negative 3, and x is negative 3 over 2. So we have two answers, but the only one that's listed is answer choice D. Number 4. What is f of g of x? So what do we need to do here? First, Let's replace g of x with what it's equal to, that is x minus 5. So we're looking for f of x minus 5, which means that we need to take x minus 5 and plug it into each x value that we see here. So it's x minus 5 squared plus 3 times x minus 5 plus 2. x minus 5 squared, that's x minus 5 times x minus 5. If we FOIL it, it's going to be x squared minus 10x plus 25. 
If we distribute 3 to x minus 5, it's going to be 3x minus 15, and then plus 2. So now let's combine like terms. We can add these two, and then we can combine those. Negative 10x plus 3x is negative 7x. 25 minus 15 is 10. 10 plus 2 is 12. So the answer is x squared minus 7x plus 12. Number 5. What is the value of g of f of 2? So first, let's find the value of f of 2. Let's replace x with 2. 2 to the third is equal to 8. 5 times 2 is 10. And 8 minus 10 is negative 2. Negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. So that's the value of f of 2. And we're looking for g of f of 2. And since f of 2 is negative 1, we need to find g of negative 1. So now let's use this equation. So it's 7 minus negative 1 squared. Negative 1 squared is negative 1 times negative 1. That's positive 1. And 7 minus 1 is 6. So g of f of 2 is equal to 6. Therefore, b is the right answer. Number 6. Are f and x and g of x, are they inverses of each other? How can we prove if they're inverses of each other? So we have to show that f of g of x is equal to x, and also g of f of x. We need to prove that this is equal to x. If we can do that, then we know for certain that f of x and g of x are inverses of each other. So let's start with the first one, f of g of x. Let's plug in g of x into f. So this is going to be f of 1 third x squared minus 1. So we're going to take this and insert it into this equation. So it's going to be the square root of 3. And then instead of writing 3x, we're going to replace x with 1 third times x squared minus 1. And then we have a plus 1 inside the square root. 3 times 1 third is simply 1. So we have 1 times x squared minus 1. And that's just x squared minus 1. Negative 1 plus 1 adds up to 0. And the square root of x squared is x. Now, let's move on to the other side. Let's replace f of x with the square root of 3x plus 1. And let's plug this into this equation. So it's going to be 1 third. And instead of writing x squared, we're going to write square root 3x plus 1 squared minus 1. So the square and the square root will cancel. And so we're just going to get 3x plus 1. And then we have a minus 1 outside of that. 1 minus 1 adds up to 0. So what we have left over is 1 third of 3x, which is equal to x. Therefore, f of x and g of x are inverses of each other. Number seven, which of the following graphs is not a function? In order to find the answer, we need to see which one does not pass the vertical line test. Starting with A, if we draw a vertical line, we can see that it touches it only once, which means that A is a function. If we do the same thing for B, it touches the vertical line only once. So B is a function. And D is also a function. It passes the vertical line test. But C is not a function. If we draw it at that location, we can see that it touches the vertical line three times. So the right answer is C. Number eight. Which of the following is not a one-to-one -one function? Is it A, B, C, or D? In order to find out which one is not a one-to-one -one function, we need to see which one will fail the horizontal line test. So starting with A, if we draw a horizontal line, we can see that the curve touches it once. 
So A is a one-to-one -one function. It passes the horizontal line test. If a function is one-to-one, -one, that means that the inverse function is a function, which means the inverse function passes the vertical line test. So looking at B, if we draw a horizontal line, it passes the test. It touches the point only once. So B is a one-to-one -one function. And the same is true for D. D is a one-to-one -one as well. But looking at C, it does not pass the horizontal line test. It touches the horizontal line at two points. So therefore, C is the answer. C is not a one-to-one -one function. If you were to draw the inverse function for C, it will look something like this. And since C is not a one-to-one -one function, since C doesn't pass the horizontal line test, the inverse will not pass the vertical line test. And so the inverse function is not a function. Number nine, if f of four comma y is 48, what is the value of y? So we can replace this with 48 because the function is 48 and x is equal to four. The first number corresponds to x, the second number corresponds to y. And our goal is to find the value of y. Four squared is four times four, that's 16. Three times four is 12. And so this is what we have. Now we could divide everything by two because all the numbers that we see here are even. So half of 48 is 24, half of 16 is eight, half of 12 is six, half of two is one. And now let's subtract both sides by 24. Now let's write it in standard form. So it's y squared plus six y and eight minus 24 is negative 16. So let's go ahead and factor. What two numbers multiply to negative 16, but add to positive six? So this is eight and negative two. So this is gonna be y plus eight and y minus two. So therefore y is equal to negative eight and it's equal to two. Two is the answer because that's the one that's listed. So b is the right answer. Number 10. What is the domain of f divided by g? So f divided by g, that's going to be 7x minus 3 divided by x squared plus 2x minus 15. So x can be anything except any value that's going to produce a 0 in the denominator. So therefore, x squared plus 2x minus 15 cannot equal 0. Let's go ahead and factor the expression. What two numbers multiply to negative 15, but add to the middle coefficient two? This is positive five and negative three. So it's gonna be x plus five times x minus three. So therefore x plus five cannot equal zero and x minus three cannot equal zero. So x cannot equal negative five and x cannot equal three. So x is all real numbers except those two values. So to write the answer using uh, interval notation, it's going to look like this. Negative infinity to negative five. That means x could be anything from negative infinity to negative five, but it doesn't include negative five. Union, x could be anything between negative five and three, but not negative five or three. And then union, three to infinity. x could be anything greater than three. So that's the domain of f divided by g.